Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Flint Community Webinar. This is your community resource. We're here every Friday from 12 to 1. We're so glad that you're here and with us. Uh, looking forward to an amazing lineup for you today. We have, uh, we have Nicole Matthews. So Nicole has been here with us before. She is the um, chief in... Sorry, I can't see my screen. She's the Chief Injury Prevention Coordinator uh, at Hurley Medical Center. And then we have a whole group of folks from G the Genesee Health System. So, you know, Carrie Channer, she's been here with us before. She's invited some guests and they're going to talk about different programs uh, that the GHS is up to. I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Heather Lynn Uphold. I'm faculty here in Flint at Michigan State University. Always grateful to be here with you. Uh, I believe we're going to start out with Nicole, but she was having just a little bit of technical difficulties. Nicole, did that get sorted out? Oh, perhaps not. And we do have EJ. So Dr. Jennifer Edwards Johnson is our nor is our regular moderator. EJ, welcome as well. Thank you. It's we're good gonna, to see everyone. We're gonna give Nicole just a minute to see if she can join us. Otherwise, Carrie, if you don't mind, we're gonna turn it over to you and your team. And we'll just yeah. flip. Oh, go ahead. Oh no, you're fine, Carrie. I was just saying we'll just flip order. Yeah, if, if my team um, and my team looks like they're all here, so I think that's okay if if Nicole's um, still working on getting her uh, IT together. So I would love to uh, hand it off to Amy Johnson. Amy, would you mind introducing yourself and then you can go into uh, your update? Sure. Thanks, Carrie. Thank you, everybody. So my name is Amy Johnson. I am the director for um, services for adults at Genesee Health System adults who have intellectual and or any developmental disabilities. Um, so we are very happy to be here and providing services to those adults in our community. Um, and I'm gonna share my screen because I actually wanna talk to you about the newest addition to Genesee County, which is the Social Club. Um, we decided on this name, the Social Club, because we really wanted to bring a new support to our county. Um, for adults 18 years and older who live anywhere in the county and have an intellectual and or a developmental disability. So due to the millage that passed, um, the community mental health millage, we've really accessed a lot of funding and supports to provide um, opportunities that promote health and wellness to this population. So this club um, is hosted here at our building um, we're located um, at the Community Integration Center. You know, GHS does have quite a few locations, um, so that's where you'll find us. And I'd love to share my screen to show you some pictures while I kind of talk about this new club. All right. We can so see it, Amy. You can see it? Yeah, it's great. Thanks, Gary. So our social club, of course, it's uh, from GHS and the Millage. Um, and here's a little overview about generally what it is, who we are, when and where. So again, it's a club uh, for adults with developmental disabilities or intellectual disabilities. 
where they have a safe place to socialize with other peers and just overall have some fun. Uh, this means that uh, this person does not need to receive any type of services from Genesee Health System. They don't really have to be connected with a formal provider. Um, we just opened up in May, uh, really at the end of May. So we are still growing. Uh, when we opened up, we started doing two days a week, just about three hours a day. So Mondays and Wednesdays from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, each month we do a new flyer because in July we're actually expanding to add Friday mornings. So we will be running uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, and to register, we do request you know, people call this number here to register, um, to kind of hear about the club, hear about our space. Uh, we do have to get some information from the individual or if they have a legal guardian from the legal guardian. And uh, we also wanna welcome them on their first day to the club by doing a, an orientation as well. Um, our Facebook um, has this flyer, so it is shareable to the community on Genesee Health Systems uh, Facebook. So our club, um, this is really what people see when they're about to enter the club. Um, you know, it's just this long hallway. It's kind of excitement is on the other side of, the, of those doors. Um, but here's kind of a visual of this space. So it is a large gym. Um, we have arts and crafts for people. Um, you know, easels for desks, easels for people who are standing. Um, We've got fidget toys, we've got um, colored pencils, um, canvases, uh, papers, um, just a lot of different tools for people if they want to come to this club and if they're artistic or they feel like they want to draw or create something, they've got a space and environment where they can feel free to do so. We also have um, some games which um, are really quite enjoyable, uh, cornhole. Uh, we do play that in our club from anybody who wants to give it a try. Um, and for anybody who's attending who's never played a uh, cornhole or a little mini um, golf game. We've got bowling in the corner there too. Um, but we also have a lot of music in our club um, just because we wanted to make sure um, people experienced that joy and had access to playing a guitar, playing ukulele, you know, putting on some headphones and playing the drums. Um, or trying out the piano too. Uh, we've got music too. So we tend to um, really uh, enjoy the music together. So this is definitely uh, a space where people just walk up there and they give it a try. Uh, sometimes there's some encouragement of, you know, hey, do you want to, you know, play this drum kit and we'll kind of show people the way. Um, but definitely the environment we're creating is really meant to be an environment where people can make choices and really access um, something really fun, you know, for that morning. Um, but not only do we have like this environment and this space for people to almost like drop in or, or attend with us, um, we also have had and continue to have community partners visit our space. So we've had some uh, musicians from the Flint Institute of Music come to visit us. Um, that's been very fun. We've played with them and danced and sang right along with them. Uh, we've had some folks from the Genesee County Parks visit us, and they showed us some um, animals that are, you know, found in the springtime in Michigan with one of their programs. We made um, slime with the Slow Museum and the planetarium folks. We've also got Disability Network coming to join us, too, for some of their recreational um, activities. Um, Exceptional Heroes is another community partner with um, providing a lot of supports in the community for adults with disabilities. So they're also um, a great supporter of us. MSU, MSU Extension is on the way. We have some things in the works for um, some Tai Chi. And uh, Bubbles the Blind Beagle, a local nonprofit has also visited us. So um, not only is our space meant to be open, full of choice, um, getting people outside of their home and participating with you know, other peers and making friends, we're also welcoming some of the community partners to come visit us. And um, obviously this list continues to grow since we've been opening since, or running since um, May. Um, and we also have plans in the future to um, get out in the community ourselves, you know, to schedule some transportation and to meet folks out in the community so we can really um, incorporate that inclusive um, mindset for the adults that we serve in our community that have um, disabilities. 
So once again, um, our flyer is definitely shareable on Genesee Health System's Facebook page. Um, and in July, we are very happy to open up our um, hours and we welcome any adult in the county who has a um, developmental or intellectual disability and they should just give us a call if they're interested in uh, hearing more. Hey, Amy, can I ask a couple questions? Yes. Thanks so much. I wondered, one, if it sounds like all of these community orgs come in to the center and sort of offer the support. So like Flint Institute of Music, I saw. Are you ever like going out to some of those places or any plans to? We do have plans. Yes, we um, we are meeting uh, with, you know, some of the parks sometime soon like in this month to talk about visiting them. Uh, and we also have some other things on the horizon too with the library. And we're also open to ideas. So as we kind of get started from um, scheduling things and creating this environment ourselves, we're also open to ideas from the people who do attend, of getting to know, hey, where would you like to go? What's a really amazing place in the county you wanna check out or go to? That's but yes, that is gonna be our next adventure is um, scheduling those outings and those trips outside of the building and into the community. That sounds so amazing. And I know like you and I probably understand what it means when we're talking about adults who may have developmental delay or intellectual disability. Mm -hmm. Can you give some examples of sort of what what's most common or or what is expected, yeah. like what pe people are coming in asking for resources and, and what specific yes. needs they might have? Absolutely. Um, so we have a variety of adults who come visit us. Um, We've got some adults who come visit us who, you know, they might bring their own activities and they're talkative, they're enjoying themselves. They're, they're able to pick up um, some musical instruments and um, arts and crafts and they're pretty happy and content and they're very social and um, uh, a great support. Um, we also have other people who are amazing supports too, but maybe they just don't um, vocalize their needs or their desires. They may not respond to all of our interactions immediately, but we're still right there with them, you know, asking them and also showing them the drum kit. Yeah. So we've got some individuals where we, we might just provide a little bit more of that support of, you know, hey, do you want to give this a try? And showing them what we're talking about. We've got some individuals who enjoy the space we have because they might um, need to jump a little bit more. You know, they have that sensory output desire. So yeah. they might um, spin and that's okay with us because, you know, they, they just need that in that moment. Um, we also have some other individuals who kind of look at our schedule to see who's coming that day and kind of pick and choose. Yeah. Um, you know, if they want to try to attend when there's a musician coming, they'll pick that day. And another day they might choose to um, do something else or stay home. Um, we also have some individuals who might need a little bit more hands-on support. Um, you know, maybe they're not um, independent using the restroom, or maybe they're not independent with, um, you know, again, communicating if they're feeling ill or if they need a request. Sure. So sometimes those folks will bring somebody with them. So we do welcome that uh, any um, individuals who need support, whether it's a parent, guardian, caregiver, family member, we've also had some of those folks come and join us in the club too. So that's really helped people feel comfortable because it is yeah. such a new space and it's, you know, they're welcome right along with us. That's so, awesome. So again, it's, it's really for people of all needs. And we have seen people with all different needs that join, that join us and they're all welcomed and, and so appreciated. So one, I want to say, I love the way your face lights up when you talk about this, because <laughs> like people, I love when people I'm, love what they do and you can totally tell that you love what you do. So thank you so much. Yeah. My last question is, are there opportunities for, and you might've said this, I'm sorry if I missed it. Are there opportunities for people who might want to volunteer um, or be a resource? So at this time, we're looking for um, partnerships with a lot of people in our community. Okay. Um, volunteering might be something we'll have to explore in the future. Sure. Because um, as this grows, we know we're going to see that future need. But right now we are starting off to like connecting with um, larger community partners. Got and it. we've been mindful about that because we've also known in the future, we want to make sure we can connect them to a resource that's out there. Absolutely. You know, whether- and I'm sure there's this- there. 
Yes. Yeah. I'm sure there's this component of also making sure that people have the expertise and, and sort yeah. of come to it with the same level of care and concern and thoughtfulness that you clearly have, have um, yeah. had with, with the people coming. So thank you so, so much. Well, thank you. And thank you, everybody. I couldn't agree more. Um, Amy is the perfect person to be the director of this, um, those services, because she's really passionate. So um, I kind of want to move on next to Angela Tyler, um, who will, sorry, there was some background noise there. Um, I want to move on to Angela Tyler, who's going to go over some of our most recent um, grant updates. Uh, thanks, Angela. Hey everybody, happy to be here. My name is Angela Tyler. I am the Director of Strategic Initiatives at GHS. I oversee our grants department. So I want to um, just give some updates on some things that we have going on. There's lots going on. We're expanding in a lot of ways. Um, we received, I wanna say back in May, um, we received funding from HRSA to establish a medical psychi psychiatry residency program. It's the Teaching Health Center Planning and Development Grant. Our um, FQHC Genesee Community Health Center was a co-applicant with us in that grant application. And we also partnered with um, Dr. Johnson, who's on this, uh, EJ, I didn't know that was her nickname, um, her from MSU, um, McLaren, Hurley, um, a lot of community partners came together to really make this happen. So we're very excited. This is a two-year planning grant. So um, things are well underway with that. So we are hoping to, um, once we get this medical residency established, that we would be able to move forward and be able to provide these services to our community. Uh, feel free to jump in on that, EJ, if you have anything to say about that. No, I think your summary is really great. I think the thing I am most excited about is the way the community came together because I, I, I'm i sure, Angela, you remember how quick the turnaround was and people, so quick. it was very quick turnaround and people came together very quickly because they realized a need in the community and we're just really excited about working together to make sure that we could think about the pipeline of who provides services particularly psychiatric services in Genesee County and how we train those people to do that work. Um, so super shout out to Angela and your team for all the work you did to get that together and moving so quickly. Thank you so much. Fantastic. And Carrie was also part yes, of that. Yes, and Carrie. <laughs> yeah, when, when, when she says the community came together, I tell you, people were emailing at 11 o'clock at night <laughs> on the weekend, like, Everyone really um, prioritized this, so it, it was really great. Wait, we never. Did. She was on vacation. <laughs> Angela was Angela was supposed to be on vacation when that grant was due, and was was oh. getting stuff to people while she was on a on a trip. So kudos. Well, to that you. happened to be only when it was time to push the button. <laughs> you know, she did most of all that work, but anyway. <laughs> so, um, so you should hear more about that um, over the next year or so. The other update I want to provide you, as many of you know, we um, received a mental health millage and part of our commitment to the community has been able to fund many grant applications. Um, this particular round of grant funding, um, I, we released the RFP earlier this year, um, went through an extensive review process, and we are excited to say that 19 organizations were funded um, to provide additional services in our community. And those grants were funded in a, in ex, a little excess of $800,000. So we were able to put that back into our community and to support some of the work that's continuing to happen. And our first round of grant funding for the mini grant program, we did a six month funding initiative and then we extended some applicants. And then with this round, we did one year um, funding con uh, commitments for people. So we're excited to be able to do that. And then the last thing I'd like to tell you all about is GHS is also a certified community behavioral health center um, expansion grantee that that grant was funded through SAMHSA. And as a result of that grant and mental health millage, we were able to expand our outpatient therapy. And if you've been around doing some of this work in the community for a while, you know that historically we've always provided services just to those that have serious mental illness and those that have the most significant impaired functioning. And as a result of the mental health millage and as a result of some grant um, dollars, we've been able to also expand that to mild to moderate because 
I know you all, I'm preaching to the choir after experiencing COVID and the pandemic, people are struggling. And it's not just those that we serve with serious mental illness, it's people that have mild to moderate illness as well. And so we launched that clinic. Um, I keep saying a couple months ago for everything, but I kid you not, I feel like everything has exploded in the last couple of months. Um, and so we are starting with those that are uninsured. And as we kind of work on the back end with um, insurance reimbursements, pretty quickly we will be moving to those that have um, commercial insurance as well. So if you know someone, like I said, if you've worked in the community for a while, there's probably people that you've come in contact with that may have called our agency requesting services and have been denied because they weren't necessarily eligible. Um, things are different now. So if you can just kind of help get the word out to people that you work with that if we serve everyone. So if people are having any kind of mental health need, distress, um, to give us a call. And that new clinic is on Center Road, right on the corner of Center and Lippincott. Thank you so much, Angela. You're welcome. That was so helpful. Um, if, if people are on the call that might have questions about the next round of mini grants, do we anticipate that we're going to be doing that again in the near future? Or how long would you say? You don't have to give me a concrete answer. <laughs> um, I don't think that's been decided yet what that will look like. So just keep an eye on our webpage. We update everything on there. Great. Thanks, Angela. I next want to turn it over to Lisa Bruder, who's going to give us an update on our behavioral health urgent care and any other of the crisis services that she would like to um, give an update on. Thanks, Lisa. All right. Hello, friends. Like Carrie said, my name is Lisa Bruder, and I'm the manager of crisis services here at Genesee Health System. The majority of my tasks is to um, run and manage the behavioral health urgent care. So I'm going to focus on that today. And then we have a couple other smaller programs that are under that umbrella that I'll share as well. So I do want to second what Angela said um, in that because our funding um, source has changed, it is so, so, so important to know that just because you did not qualify a few years ago for GHS services does not mean that will be the same today. The behavioral health urgent care, much like Angela described, the outpatient clinic is also available to anyone, any age, any level of need or care, any income, any commercial, any insurance status. So no matter what the need is, we're able to support that person within these services. The urgent care is, is set up to be a diversion program. So really want to support our community and our friends at Hurley Hospital and make sure that individuals experiencing a mental health crisis can be served with mental health experts and in an environment that will be non-traumatizing. Hurley is amazing and great and wonderful and we love them, but they're so busy. So there's a long wait in the waiting room. And if you've ever had a really, really bad day, and I know each of you have, the last thing you want to do is sit in the waiting room where there's chaos and other people's pain and misery. Our wait time here at the urgent care is usually less than five minutes. And on our busiest day, it's less than an hour. And so really getting people in and served and back into the community on their favorite couch with their favorite blanket is our goal. So right now we're, we're open seven days a week, Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. until 10.30 p.m. And Saturday and Sunday from 10 a.m. until 6.30 p.m. We are virtual 24-7. So there's never a time where you're not able to reach us by phone for the purpose of crisis or the needed assessment and screening. By the end of this calendar year, so before we reach 2024, we will be on site in person 24 seven and never close our doors. So the urgent care here on site, we have everything to meet people's basic needs. Just recognizing that if, if there are individuals out in the community who maybe haven't eaten or had water or don't have clean clothes, that it would be really difficult for them to manage um, the crisis and the de-escalation and manage um, what they've got going on emotionally. So we keep everything here to help people feel comfortable and safe. Individuals can also come and sit. We use a living room model. So we have a room where more than one consumer can sit. They can talk with each other. They can talk with one of our peers, but just exist in this safe place where they know that they can receive help if they need it. When someone comes in, we can offer on-the-spot therapy, de-escalation, crisis intervention, but we also provide screening and assessment for a higher level of care. 
So within our crisis continuum, we have crisis stabilization, which is a program that meets individuals in their home for up to 28 days, every single day. So every day they have someone saying, um, I know you're having a rough time and I'm here to support you and let me help you walk through that. Um, individuals could also use the urgent care every day. We also have psychiatric services if needed, where people can access um, emergent psych services by our medical director here. His name is Dr. Baha. We also have a day treatment program. We have a crisis residential unit. Um, and of course, inpatient hospitalization. And when we work with individuals, like I said, our goal is always to keep them at home and safe and comfortable. So the least restrictive method. We also work very closely with law enforcement. And so we receive police drop-offs here for someone that may otherwise have landed at Hurley ER or in the county jail, recognizing that the best place to serve someone who has a mental health issue is right here with mental health experts. We also run a program out of the urgent care here called UCARES, where we provide mobile school response to young people experiencing a mental health crisis in their educational setting. Right now we are um, MOU'd with eight different schools within the county and we'll continue to add more and more on as schools show their interest. And for that, we are kind of um, in place of police or EMS, meaning that the school is gonna do everything they can and need in order to work with that student. All of the, the resources that they have on site, they're gonna use all of those. And if they get to that exhausted point, they'll call us we will be out to them and we can screen, uh, do a crisis screening on site, and of course do de-escalation de and make that young person feel safe with the goal of them returning to their classroom and continuing to learn in an environment where they can be safe and feel safe. If that child needs to be transported from that point for our crisis screening and assessment, then we'll manage that care from there so that the school can resume their activities and um, be safe in their classroom. We also have peers, um, and for you guys who don't know, peers are individuals who have lived experience in our mental health system, and they're here to help people navigate sometimes the challenging entry points and processes of our system. So we have two peers that work in the Hurley ER. So if any of our friends do land over there, but they would be a better fit for us, our peers help us facilitate telehealth. So we're, we're providing services to individuals who have been admitted to the Hurley ER and we'd be better served by a mental health professional from here at the BHUC. We also have a care specialist who works with individuals who are discharged from Genesee County Jail. We teach classes within the jail. We're part of the IGNITE program. So we teach um, substance use disorders, mental health 101, grief and loss, how to cope with um, being detained, missing family, things like that. And then we have our program where our care specialist connects with individuals post discharge, make sure that they're linked to Medicaid, they're linked with services, they have medications, they have food and any other social determinants of health to make sure that they're doing well and they have the opportunity to be rehabilitated. And we've seen really great progress with that. Um, we also have co-response here out of our building, which is two Genesee County Sheriff Sergeants who are contracted by Genesee Health System, and they ride in tandem with social workers to 911 mental health calls. So in order to do that, we trained 100% of Genesee County Dispatch to help them understand mental health and create a code that they could put on their 911 call board that would give officers an indication that this call has a mental health component. When a call goes on the board that has a mental health component, there are lots of officers in the county that we trained, and I'll talk about that in a second, or our co-response car can pick that up. Because there's a social worker riding in tandem with the sergeant, they can screen in the field and make sure that person gets to right where they need to be to be de-escalated and safe from that crisis. Again, hoping that it's in their home and we can have resources come directly to them as community resources. CIT is Crisis Intervention Team, and that is a 40-hour model. It's based off an evidence-based practice where we train law enforcement how to manage mental health crises so they have a better understanding of diagnosis, resources in the community, and how to de-escalate in a time of crisis. So we have trained 97 as of today, but next week is CIT week, so we have another 20 officers joining us, which means we will break 100 officers trained in Genesee County over the last 14 months. So we have moved 
further and faster than most counties in this initiative, recognizing that it's a need and it's what we need to do to make our community safer and stronger. So that has been um, a really exciting um, program. Lastly, we do lots of other things for first responders. So we teach secondary traumatic stress classes. We provide critical incident stress management to firefighters, um, EMS professionals, police officers, try to be a support system for all essential workers, first responders coming off the cusp of COVID, seeing mental health have huge spikes. We just want to be here. And we don't have a lot of barriers to our care. So if if you're thinking about someone or someone, something or someone who needs help right now, and the things I said didn't line up, it doesn't mean that there isn't something. So I, I welcome everyone to reach out to me and I'll put my email address in the chat here. Um, if someone is in need of help, we're going to determine the barrier and break down the barrier to get them the help that they need. And we've not always had that option. And so I'm really excited to work for a program who has that ability. So let me know how I can support you and the people that you support as well. Lisa, there was one question in the chat that was, um, are, is there a copay for some of these services? So it was specifically related to the mental health urgent care. Awesome question. I'm glad you asked. At this time, there is not. Everything is paid for um, through, we bill Medicaid because we're a Medicaid provider, um, but anyone who comes in with commercial insurances who would otherwise have a copay are not being charged at all. This service is completely free for anyone who walks in the door. That's fantastic. These are amazing resources that you're providing to the community. And I think like we've seen the need and I think you alluded to it, right? Hurley's urgent. We love Hurley. We love mm -hmm. all of our community partners, but we understand that they get overwhelmed too. And so where we can fill a yeah. gap and a need, it feels so great. And I just really appreciate all the resources that you all are providing. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me today. Awesome. Um, I just want to thank the, um, our GHS team, and um, I am going to um, wait, and I was going to share a little bit about our Suicide Prevention Coalition, but actually it's probably better if I wait a little bit to, so we have more details to share next time. So I will hand it off um, to you, EJ, and whoever's next on the agenda. I think it's Nicole. Thank you. Let me unmute. I've had technical difficulties. Oh my goodness. <laughs> no worries. I had technical difficulties getting on. So we're, we're all. Oh, and then a social worker called. We know what it's like to always be, you know, what's the next thing? Oh, there's eight balls in the air at the same time. No. As I play with my stress ball. <laughs> 30 in the air. Um, thank you so much. And GHS not only is the most amazing just agency and group of people, but Lisa Bruder just she knows I love her, but our TRC, we've worked with her before and Nancy Kirsch and social workers over there that I've worked with before are such fantastic people. And what on earth would our whole city do without what you all do? And I know we're the medical arm of our support, um, our safety net in the community, essentially, you know, and we treat all the ages and we have all the specialties and we're training as well. So I know that um, my little, I have a little group, a little piece of the trauma department, and I get to represent so many different varieties of um, just kind of specialties around trauma, but only prevention. So I'm really glad to do that. Um, and I am only one person. I do have students and interns, but car seats and bike helmets and smoke detectors, oh my. So the Safe Kids programs and injury prevention is the, um, arm of prevention where it does have a very uh, wide net, I have to say. The safety advocates that not only in the hospital, but um, in the community that we can help to create and develop. Uh, we cover all the key concepts. Injury prevention is a very vast, uh, it really is a vast amount of overwhelming information. <laughs> and if I look at seasonal, thankfully I can just focus on a season. Summer safety is a big one. There is uh, so many high risk, there are so many high risk issues that happen. Um, and we always have the road safety and we have the age groups and the variety and the car seats um, if it's on the road, but then we have all the sports in the falls, every kind of traumatic brain injury prevention, concussions. We work with helmets, um, both in the winter season and in the summer, Never mind motorcycles, because if we can do prevention programs around that, as a trauma ICU nurse personally in the past, how many of the people on motorcycles that did not have helmets on after our fun-filled 
helmet law ended, let me just say, I love the freedom and all, but every one of those motorcycle crashes that were at the bedside in my ICU said, if they survived, they said, I wish I could be part of a prevention program, uh, being like a testimonial. Again, preventable injuries. If we look at burns and fires and our collaborations with police and fire and smoke detectors and the Red Cross, um, fire safety plans and smoke detectors, I'll touch on that today too. And then the varieties of the, of course, kind of violence, we will see all of those. And we have the Trauma Recovery Center, which is our 360 wraparound post uh, trauma recovery program. It's amazing if you haven't worked with Tia Coles. Um, great team of people, trauma navigators um, after the need hopefully doesn't arise, but it does. Um, again, if we can prevent, we can't really prevent substance use, but we do work with the Drug and Danger Children Program and it's pretty fantastic. Um, if we see the child mal maltreatment, we see the non-accidental traumas. Um, so the care of the physical in, uh, injuries, I'm missing an E there, still the point. Um, the vast amount of things we can prevent. Summer safety is what I would like to talk about today, please. And COVID. Yes, I was a school nurse during COVID, just saying. Um, that was very challenging. We've all survived, and I think we're all uh, a bit wearer, wiser for the wear, I guess they say. But now we can do more education. Now we can do more uh, outreach. So I'm on the road again. If you see my little safe kids van, it's getting repaired right now, but it, you know, takes me around to be able to uh, share our programming. We work with the Michigan Trauma Coalition, which uh, it's about 80 hospitals in, in the state, in the um, state of Michigan. In our region alone, we have about 18 hospitals. So uh, we collaborate with all the other injury prevention people. We are um, at Hurley though, we're the only level one trauma center. So when I go out into the community and help to prevent injury, um, we're also helping those other hospitals too. So um, I, I love to take and set up tables and hand out um, safety information, but then we do a lot of hands-on stuff with a lot of other hospitals as well. So um, the next slide will be the, um, we, because we're a training hospital, I think everyone knows that. Student nurses, we have interns, we have um, teams that we help to coordinate to go out and, and then again work with our police and fire. We use our fire stations, we have great partnerships. And when we do car seat programs, I just realized that I probably shouldn't have that picture there with the kiddo. So if you could move on, I don't have their release handy. So thank you. Um, our programming though consists of three, as we know prevention is multifaceted and there's a continuum. The primary, secondary, and tertiary preventions. Um, so often, like our trauma recovery center, for example, that secondary prevention is so important. Um, and that's right after and immediately following a, um, a trauma and then the mitigation of repetition. But then we also work upstream. So on that continuum, I think it's very important uh, to look at the, the variety of ways that we can prevent. Um, the next question or the next slide actually is a question for you. It's an ask. Um, as we're sharing programming out in the community, please help us. We need those partnerships. I know we have a lot of them, but our community stakeholders and those stakeholders who work with children, uh, we just, I'm going to share today basically a focus on things that I can ask you to help and share with the people that you work with. The things that we see, um, the tips that are needed out in the community, uh, post assessment for safety and based on the injuries we see. Uh, but 101 safety, I'm surprised by how many kiddos and from being a school nurse, I was surprised to see how many kids didn't know their, their information. Um, an officer or a firefighter or a nurse or someone would ask, you know, you're lost or you, we need this or that, whatever it may be. And what is your mom's name? Or what is your grandma's name? Or where do you live? And they didn't know identifiers of their family. And it was very hard to help them when their mom's name is mom or their grandma's name is grandma. Um, so working basic safety is, um, let's our, have our kiddos understand some of the uh, identifiers to find who they need to find if they are ever lost or are needing assistance. Um, if you could go to the next uh, step. In the summer, we've got a lot of basic 101 safety things. Um, 
but there are more babysitters, more kids are home. We know that um, they're at home alone a lot of times. Having basic first aid trainings, knowing that CPR is uh, something that's just known if someone's choking or has an incident, your babysitter, um, those summer injuries, having a first aid kit. Uh, we are always asking families to focus on these things and um, our partners to share. You can put parental controls on TV or the computer. Um, if possible, we know that um, there are many risks online and we can protect our kids from that. And then safely storing medications and having emergency phone numbers around, super helpful also. Um, as we move from basics into some more specifics, there are safety concerns for injury prevention and just summer safety. Um, if I look at bike helmets, if I look at our emergency department staff that comes out into the community, um, next slide for some activities that we've been doing. Um, we do get grants for things like helmets. We do organize camps and have education out in the community. Um, last weekend, I fitted 50 kids in bike helmets. Um, we did do it outside of this region. However, they gave me some helmets to bring back to our region because we financially need to order some more helmets. Uh, but if you go to the next slide, just basic use of helmets. Um, a lot of kids we see driving around. I love people that text me, I just saw a group of kids without helmets and this is their zip code. I'm like, oh, and I want to help everyone. <laughs> but I do know that just asking people to use a helmet and adjust the helmet properly poor fit makes it just not helpful. Um, if a helmet has been dropped before, they only have one use, but bicycle related head injuries, we can reduce those dramatically by 85% and crashes. If we know uh, safety on the roads and using a helmet, adjusting the, the chin straps, having um, you able to open your mouth, and if you turn your head and tilt your head, that the helmet doesn't wobble too much. We want the V to be at the ears. So if we're fitting a helmet for our kiddo, just remember those basics, it's really helpful. Um, you can go to the next slide too. Um, when we are the water safety, when we are working with the YMCA, one of our summer camps, Rescue 911, is um, unfortunately this is one year we're not doing it in eight years. But we use the YMCA recommendations and they'll tell us always to have a designated water watcher. Someone that knows not only that the kids are in the pool or lake, but knows that they can't look at their phone or they'll allow someone else to look at their phone while they're the water watcher, but designate someone um, and to make sure kids have approved life preservers and use arm floaties and have the tools at their resources. We have city, state and county resources too. So knowing that injury is the leading cause of death for children under one years old is um, a really, it's a driving force to go ahead and push that prevention. Um, the cost of childhood injuries, the return on investment for you know a bike helmet versus a traumatic brain injury. Um, and we have these resources, we can find them, we can help your agency to find them. If you go to the next slide, the state of Michigan, the Bay Area, where here in Michigan, uh, the greater Great Lakes Bay Area, that's region three. So we look at allocating our time, uh, dollars, et cetera, around the highest numbers of our falls. And then we bring that down again to Genesee County. I've showed this group in the past, some slides, some trends about injuries. So slipping, tripping, stumbling and falls is still number one. Um, but I would say of all the types of injuries that happen and how we focus our resources, if you go to the next slide, the number one uh, time consumption of my um, role is our Safe Kids Greater Flint arm under Hurley Trauma. Hurley is the lead agency for Safe Kids Greater Flint and with motor uh, vehicle injuries, what they are, and that's teen driving, that's distracted driving, that's the whole shebang. Um, Car seats are, uh, they're giant, it's overwhelming. <laughs> just, but I could go on and on for an hour just about car seats. If you go to the next slide though, I'd like to keep it to the, um, the basics. You go from babies all the way through the age spectrum 
and um, we do classes, we do so many outreach activities, and still I feel like I don't even touch the scratch the surface of the car seat world. Um, we work with Kettering, the crash testing. Um, babies should ride in a car seat the smallest up until their height weight parameters, the middle sizes up until their height weight parameters, rear facing as long as possible. And then once they graduate to forward facing, use that top tether. Again, until height weight, they outgrow it. And the booster seat is that next step, which is, is vital. The, the belts have to be on the bones in a kiddo. Um, if it's just a bottom booster, the point is to keep that belt off their neck and off their soft belly. So I know it's a lot of information, but car seats are. It's just all about the belt on the bones. And then kids should be in the back because of uh, airbags specifically too. Uh, if you go to the next slide, we have resources, flyers, posters, brochures, um, uh, you can go to the hurleymc.com website of uh, their inspection stations. We work a lot with other skilled and certified uh, car seat technicians. I personally, when I feel that I'm on call, um, is for our special needs kiddos. Um, if they're in a casted scenario or they need a bed and they can't use a car seat, I'm really the only person of a handful of people that can use those. So I tend to be on call a lot for that. We hope that those don't happen all the time, um, but when they do, uh, we have special equipment and receive grants for the things that we use to help. Um, but if you need brochures, please let us know and go to safekids.org for any questions. Um, I know print things cost, but that being said, we have them and we want to share them. Um, the next slide, please, goes a little off into a different area. But the hurleymc.com webpage is important because you can access a lot of links through there. And I'm going to go to Stop the Bleed because we are a trauma center. Um, we have been working with uh, schools for emergency preparedness procedures for uh, many years. I've been teaching MERT, uh, the medical emergency response in GISD schools for about seven years. So those with the school nurse collaborations and the hospital school collaborations, um, on top of our partnerships in the region and in the um, state of Michigan, the Michigan Trauma Coalition, all of our hospitals, we do Stop the Bleed training. So if you go to our website, there's Stop the Bleed uh, links, resources, and opportunities also to sign up and hope that you do that. Um, we are doing uh, schools and churches. We're doing trainings hands-on. We need more trainers, so that's always a thing. Um, but that's a big part of summer safety because our injuries around penetrating wounds and gunshots do increase dramatically in the summertime. And they always have. And um, so, yeah, working at that bedside in the trauma ICU exposed us to um, the summers, I think we all know, can be very tragic. Uh, so the more people we have in the community that can help and to address needs and helps out in the community and participate in caring for our neighbors and caring for ourselves, we like to help facilitate those trainings. Um, but you can put in a request there on the website also. If you please go to the next slide. Um, we have a lot of fun too. I mean, Safe Kids is about kids. Um, I do interviews, we'll do hands-on tutorials. Um, Police, again, fire, uh, going to schools, doing tables, sharing information. Um, I have a team of students and some amazing staff here, but I am our outreach person. Nurse T knows because she's doing all the things too, and she's focusing on medical, and I'm focused on the trauma, and then I do the 20 hours for the safe kids itself. We do. We enjoy our partnerships and our people and um, if you go to the next slide please the agencies that we love um, working with are the people like yourselves the um, the red cross team you know i worked with becky back at the schools um, amazing the fire setters and the fire teams around the state the state fire marshal just amazing people how can we get ahead of preventing fires? How can we get ahead of preventing burns? How do we work upstream? Um, if somebody does experience 
I mean, obviously we can't prevent everything, right? We try, we need more resources, access capacity issues. But if we can't prevent things, people like the Great Lakes Burn Camp who are amazing, um, I could do a whole webinar just on how amazing they are and what they do. And if you know a child with a burn, they have a free camp that they can attend. Um, and you can go to the greatlakesburncamp.org. Uh, but we can prevent them by hiding matches and lighters and have fewer injured kiddos. Um, make a game of it. Have a home safety plan. Do an escape plan for in case there's a fire or an emergency and practice it both day and night and have working smoke detectors so you have a heads up. Um, we can prevent those injuries from the fires, working the continuum of prevention, just for an example around that topic alone. Um, and if you go to the next slide, please. We are the regional burn center. So I, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about how if burns happen, the other hospitals are transferring to Hurley as well. So caring for those burns, not using ice or as grandma said, butter or um, just cold water, cool water, excuse me, not cold water, but cool, more tepid, but for 20 minutes can really lower the temperature. Um, cooling the burn, calming the patient, um, make sure you use some uh, just antibiotic bacitracin ointment on a burn. Um, the non-adhering dressings, they really keep uh, anything from sticking to that burn. Additionally, um, if a burn is on maybe hands or feet or a bendy area, they will need medical attention. And um, please also go to the next uh, slide. The addressing the need for first aid is always a thing, right? Um, making sure people have a first aid kit in their home, um, not using the butter or the mustard. Uh, we won't go into the deep details of like what happens with a blister or um, these are things we could do further uh, assessment on, but a lot of the hospitals that get the burns to them and send them here to Hurley, that is a big part of the busyness of uh, the hospital too, is where the level one trauma and the burn center, people are sending People, people are sending patients here a lot. Um, but in our town, in our community, just going out and saying, okay, here are things that we can do, tips, tricks, prevent, uh, be safer, know when to seek medical attention. We have all the urgent cares as well. I have to shout out to them because the emergency department isn't always a um, obviously a perfect resource. And thankfully we have that um, behavioral health backup with our amazing GHS team. If you go to the next slide, it will just touch on this and I'm almost finished. Um, again, that 20 minutes with the uh, water, with that whole system of pre-hospital care, uh, this is our Michigan trauma system and this is our region three. Um, the regional trauma advisory committee there is a whole process, so um, it's it's good that everyone knows that, and that um, caregivers and bystanders, especially with a burn, there's a limited window. So um, we want to deliver effective treatment, and we want people to have more tools out in the community. There's no question. Um, but remove anything that's covering a burn if that happens. You've got that medical continuum to get to a hospital. Um, cool the burn, cover the burn. Um, again, something that does not stick and then get to a doctor, especially if it's more than an inch or like I said, hands, feet or on a bendy area. Um, so that is a lot of information, I know. And the very next slide, um, there are things that you yourself and your agency, if you go out there and you um, have super customizable resources available on all the topics, safekids.org is amazing. Um, but the, sa the I'm Safe team, they will, um, they lower the price when you buy more than a hundred. They put your logos on it. I will always, with every grant order, coloring books and crayons and all of the bookmarks and I've got brochures coming out of everywhere, trust me. <laughs> but um, the truth is we wanna go beyond brochures, right? Uh, sometimes it's just that bridge to start the conversation. And if you and your agency have some I'm safe materials, we are a great resource at Hurley. Um, but we really want 
you to also have those resources. And we do require advance notice because um, we just ask if you take that time, you know, something's coming down the pipe, give me a heads up. Um, I can't do the, hi, I just had a baby and I need a car seat. Um, as easily as I can, hey, I've got a mom at 25 weeks and these are how she qualifies for the grant program. Um, it gives us time to plan. It gives us time to respond on all the safety topics. So when you do have to wait, I know that we do all appreciate your patience. <laughs> um, basically, if there's any other questions, I'm so happy to. I know this is just, I closed out May, for example. We had Stop the Bleed. We had um, the MERT trainings before the school year ended, which we'll have again in August. Um, we're doing a lot of Michigan Trauma Coalition Stop the Bleed and the regional. Um, we had three conferences over the last two months from the Pediatric Trauma Conference, the Regional Conference, and uh, the Michigan School Nurses Conference, which we spoke on Stop the Bleed, trying to go to a higher level of getting people in the schools trained. And then um, we had a really fun event at uh, one school. We had a couple others too, and we've got Carmen com coming up too for their, um, yeah, so a lot of going on. So thanks for your patience, and please always uh, give us as much heads up as possible have any questions and you can also reach out to me at the trauma department. We definitely have some really great questions for you. And thank you so much. This is such useful information. And I want to give you this feedback because I used it. You talked a little bit about the telling kids actual names before. And I got to tell you, I went to my five-year-old and I told all my family members and the next time we saw my mom she was telling my kids like okay what's grandma's name right and so it was so <laughs> perfect and I used it so thank you so much for that advice so glad I like the mustard thing I hadn't heard of I've heard people say like <laughs> butter on a bird I have never heard the mustard thing I wondered if you had any sense of where that had come from like what are people thinking it's helpful for uh, I know it's, it's funny that team did some amazing research and they have that um on the slide uh their own website and they're a whole team of researchers and I trust them yeah. <laughs> so but that was just like you know they had referenced all of the old wives tales right yeah. and I know we have so many of them but as medical professionals there's that thin veil right <laughs> between I all the things that were <laughs> I've it's, heard, it's I've heard the snake on an eye when something's, and I think all of this is just the refrigerated stuff, right? Like and a bag of peas. So right. You think ice, right? Really, really hot, really, really cold. But that dramatic shift, it's not good for the skin, the tissues. If we understand cellular, you know, healing processes, we don't want to, you know, it just cool water, 20 minutes, slow, mellow, you know, just cool, tepid. Um, the extremes aren't good for the body, are they? <laughs> no, and I, I super appreciate you driving that point home. The last sort of question we had was like, do you have any upcoming trainings or events that people should know about? You had a slide that I wonder if we can bring back up just to remind people, but I, I this, this question came when you were talking about some of the bike helmet events that had happened, um, some of the uh, car seat trainings that had happened, and I wondered if you had any other upcoming events you wanted to mention? So I don't have fixed events for car seats. Okay. I rotate within certain circles like our pregnant mom circles and then I take referrals for different things. On that page in hurleymc.com, you can look at the request page and you can put in things. I always get back to people. I've got some auto responses too. Um, when we, <clears throat> excuse me, when we have big events, oh, I push them out to everyone. Um, our rescue 911, though, we have in four cities usually in June. We've had it for eight years, but this is a year off. And since COVID, a lot of our hands on things were still delayed. Um, still can't do car seats at Flint Fire just yet. So we're kind of be bopping around different places, but we need to do it with the car. And um, so we're doing per deal, like per uh, referral requests right now. Okay. Uh, Foodkids.org, though. Um, they have the ultimate car seat guide if you have questions. If you're in need of a grant car seat, you can go to Hurley and just literally search Safe Kids. Um, there is, uh, or go to Safe Kids at HurleyMC.com. So we can get requests to you or navigate you through. But to get a grant seat, I'll share all the requirements criteria. You also can um, 
put in a request there our university of michigan comes out this way at times as well so we have a whole team i know all the car seat technicians in the area and most agencies have at least one or consider getting certified please because we need more technicians absolutely more than we've ever needed more technicians you just gave me an idea. I have, you know, I've got some med students. I'm going to think about getting certified and think about how they can really add into the, the group of people doing this work. And we're doing wind services at Hurley next week for the staff too on car seats. I do that every couple of years. Make sure people know the basic basics. Awesome. And helmets, any upcoming training there? I have about 20 helmets right now. Yeah. And this, um, I usually get them from other places because I don't necessarily have the dollars to always buy helmets. And then we put a big event together. But pre COVID, it was already really weird doing those. I quarantined after just in case because I touched like 50 kids. And it was super nerve wracking. <laughs> I can imagine that was the case. So we will have people reach out to you if they need helmet checks. And, and thank you so much for the wondrous and, and significant resources that you provide for the community. Thank you to everyone who is here. Thank you to GHS. We'd love to hear from you. Let us know if you'd like us to talk more about a specific topic or there's a, a speaker you'd like to see on the webinar. Thank you so much for all of your attention and your time. Uh, CEUs for CH uh, community health workers. Those are the, that's the information right there.